To today's video, today is Tuesday, August 20th, 2024, and today we are going to be talking about Kamala Harris's momentum amid the Democratic National Convention, as Democrats are expecting a post-convention bounce nationwide following uh, this very, very energetic and enthusiastic moment for the Democratic Party. Their convention, their nominating process today, they are nominating Vice President Harris to be officially the Democratic nominee for president. We are going to see the full roll call. President Biden spoke yesterday. Dr. Joe Biden spoke yesterday. So many different points that we can look at this and start to see exactly what the energy on the ground in Chicago is telling us about the remainder of this presidential race. Now, I want to preface this video by saying that a convention bounce in 2020 was not nearly as pronounced as it was in 2016, 2012, 2008, and a convention bounce typically happens on both sides of the aisle. And a big reason for that, I think, when we're using that as our point of comparison in many other metrics is that the 2020 election was unlike any other. It wasn't actually held in Milwaukee like it was supposed to. It wasn't actually going to be this massive event because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And so the virtual convention did in fact see Biden gain nationally, but he was already up by a pretty substantial amount. In 2012 and 2008, when Obama received convention bumps, that was at a time where he was in a narrower point on the national level. And we'll be talking about that a little bit later down the line, but also I wanted to talk just generally about this level of momentum and enthusiasm that Democrats are exhibiting during this convention, but also what it might mean for the coming weeks as the momentum was building up in the month leading up to the convention. We are nearly one month since Kamala Harris has entered into the presidential race and what has felt like a year of campaigning, uh, arguably for the Kamala Harris campaign, as the momentum grows. What we know from traditional and normal election years like this one is that convention bumps absolutely exist, and they absolutely matter. So going back to the most recent presidential election prior to COVID-19, in 2016, Hillary Clinton, although she did end up losing the election, saw a significant convention bump. A good example of this, too, is that Donald Trump also received a big convention bump. In 2016, Republicans held their convention back in July. They held their convention, the RNC happened, and Donald Trump received a significant uptick to a point where for the first time in 2016 national polling data, Donald Trump led Hillary Clinton. In 2020, Donald Trump never led Joe Biden, not one point in time since Joe Biden announced his candidacy to the election. But at a period of time, for a week long, Donald Trump, after his convention, actually led Hillary Clinton. Because a lot of the press and the, uh, you know, the focus of that convention was around the unification of the Republican Party, bringing people back into this bigger tent that the GOP was putting forth. And so then came the DNC, then Hillary Clinton also saw a convention bump. But I'm using this more of an example on Democratic politics, because I think it's a better, more relevant factor in assessing what we might see this upcoming next week or two following the convention. And so Hillary Clinton received, on average, a five-point bump in battleground states after the convention and nationally. It was a massive, massive uptick for Hillary Clinton. And she was already in a position where, arguably, you know, she was on track, in theory, on track for victory until we saw that final two weeks of the 2016 campaign that really doomed her chances given how narrow that margin of loss actually was. But Hillary Clinton, again, not to focus too much on the 2016 election— did in fact receive a five to six point bump, and that's discussed in this political article. Her best poll showing her with a seven point bump, her worst poll showing her with a three point bump. All around, Hillary Clinton made massive gains. In 2012, Obama also saw it. He saw it at a time where many people were worried that Obama would not win the election. The polls on election day, too, the entire month of October, for a context, too, about how polls aren't always the best indicator of the national popular vote. Uh, in 2012, the entire month of October, Mitt Romney led Barack Obama. So the entire month leading up to the election, Mitt Romney, in theory, was on track for victory. And yet Obama ended up winning. But he received a convention bump, a convention bump that likely built up enough so that way even when Mitt Romney was winning, there was far more room to fall than where it would have been had Obama been at a worse point if he did not receive a convention bump. The big thing about these conventions is that you get 24-7 coverage for four consecutive days talking about policy, talking about your opposition, talking about your party, boosting your presidential nominee, and the Republicans had that. But they had that for Donald Trump against Joe Biden. They had signs out there, fire Joe Biden, sleepy Joe, dementia Joe, whichever way they wanted to take it. Joe Biden was the target of all the attacks of the RNC. The day after the RNC ends, he drops out of the race. And so all that money, you know, tens of millions of dollars spent on the convention arena, on the convention, uh, everything that came part of it, the RNC's entire thing was anti-Joe, anti-Joe, anti-Joe. Now... They had to backtrack because they didn't have anything against Kamala Harris and do not have any future conventions laid up. They do not have any future events that are going to get the publication, uh, sorry, the publicity that this DNC will. 
And so I think too about 2012 again, because that was a close, close election. Feels very similar to this one where it really could be anybody's game at this point in time. But Obama did in fact receive a convention bump. He saw a slight uptick on the national level, even though he was already leading. And I think we're closer to 2012 than we are to 2008 when Obama went from tied to up eight points after the convention. We also remember 2008 as an election that was a very big victory for the Democratic Party, but we forget that it actually was close at periods of time. When John McCain announced Sarah Palin as his running mate, in hindsight, we look at that as a very, very bad pick. At the time, it was a very strong one. Her introduction speech and her acceptance speech at the RNC was some of the best speaking we have seen from VP nominees in decades, even through today. Sarah Palin at the time, before things started to get really bad around the months of October and November, she was actually a stellar VP choice. Record high approval ratings in Alaska. She had uh, a really good speaking voice, really good story to tell. She just wasn't the right person for the job very clearly, and the voters rejected that. But what we found there was that after that, we saw John McCain really do well in the polls. After his RNC, he made it from an Obama lead to a McCain lead nationwide. It's really hard to see that by the time we reached an electoral map that was 365 to 173 that John McCain was ever leading at one point. But he was. He was doing well. And he was in a position where he could have won that election against Barack Obama, which, believe it or not, might have been crazy to think about now, but was very, very possible. And you also have to take into account, too, you know, elections that we see in November aren't always indicators of what we see at the convention. And so I want us to keep that in mind as well. Kamala Harris's momentum could very well stop in a month from now and reverse track in favor of Donald Trump. But what we have seen over the past month is a perfectly executed Kamala Harris campaign with very, very, if any, very, very, very little slip ups. We haven't seen much. We haven't seen many things that she has been publicly criticized for. The only things we've seen thus far in the way she has handled the protesters in Michigan, to which she course corrected in Arizona. Beyond that point, we have not seen much national criticism for either her or Governor Tim Walz. Republicans really have been just trying to throw anything at the wall at this point. You've seen that they've gone from things like laughing Kamala. Now it's communist Kamala. They have gone from a variety of different things because nothing is landing. And because Republicans spent the past three and a half years preparing for a re-election against Joe Biden, not foreseeing the possibility that he steps out of the race. And I will admit, I did not see that as a possibility either. But I'm not running a national campaign. And so the Republican Party really came into this with no ability to stop this Kamala Harris momentum. And she has done significantly better in terms of favorability to a point where now she is at her highest record approval since 2021, 45% nationwide, just down two points. A week before Joe Biden dropped out of the race, Kamala Harris hit her lowest level of approval ever lowest level of approval and highest level of disapproval ever. Now, a month later, she is nearly more favored than she is unfavored. That matters. And so all of these things taken into account, this DNC, which we know historically has provided bumps for the Democratic ticket from anywhere from five points to eight points, will bump Kamala Harris. And the delegates, the Democrats, and sure, many other people, journalists, independents, people who see this on the outside, Believe it too, because they can see what this is doing. I watched the RNC and I'm watching the DNC today. We have been watching these conventions for two cycles now. I watched them in 2020, watched them in 2024. These conventions are times where things really cannot go wrong. You cannot have any type of error when you are broadcast to millions of Americans and people are watching this, clipping it, live tweeting it. This is the narrative that will be really dominating the news cycle for the next four days. Convention, 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 new poll convention, new news break convention. It's all about that. And so today, too, the Kamala Harris ticket is leaving nothing to chance. They are now also campaigning. President Obama speaking at the DNC today. Kamala Harris is now campaigning in Milwaukee in no location better for the Democratic ticket than the former arena for the Republican National Convention. Kamala Harris and Tim Walz will be holding a joint rally in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, in the same arena that the RNC was held in. And we are going to see a lot of news coverage in the Rust Belt region because this is held in the Midwest. We are going to see a lot of news coverage nationally because there will be simultaneous rallies in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and with President Obama in Chicago, Illinois. It is like a press frenzy, a rush to cover the right thing for the Democratic ticket because there is so much happening which is why this momentum continues to be built up. This is not a campaign that was just ushered in a whole new level of support without any reason. This is a campaign, although being the same people that ran the same Joe Biden ticket, 
With a new principal at the top, they have far more room for growth. Room for growth because Kamala Harris, fundamentally, based on the data, based on any metric point, is more electable than Joe Biden, more liked than Joe Biden. And it's something that wasn't immediately clear in the conversations around whether or not she should replace him at the top of the ticket, but is so painstakingly clear today. And that's why this momentum is continuing and maintaining itself. Kamala Harris has never genuinely been put up on the national level as the presidential nominee. Everyone loves to cite the lack of votes she received in the 2020 Democratic primary. But we think, too, Joe Biden ran for president in 1988, dropped out before the primaries in 2008, got less than 1% of the national vote, and 12 years later, he's president of the United States. Those primaries are not always the best indicators of how well someone might do on the national level. I'm sure we all know a random politician out there that if we were to just snap our fingers and make the Democratic or Republican nominees, they would probably win. Same thing with Nikki Haley. We really can't argue she would lose a general election because she lost the Republican primary. Equally, though, I will say, levels of enthusiasm and levels of excitement for candidates can absolutely be reflected in their primary performances. I think Nikki Haley would have had a lot of trouble courting those Trump voters. I think she could have done it. But it's not as if any Democrat or any Republican who does poorly in a primary is electable in the general election. That's not the conclusion I want you to draw from this. Point being, though, is specific to Kamala Harris, because I think this is her moment, and she is meeting the moment, and she has been for the past month. And the problem for Republicans is that this isn't some moment that has been reached in June of 2023, that Joe Biden saw the 2022 midterms and decided six months later, I am now going to step down and we are going to have Kamala Harris as the nominee, but we can have a primary. This would be a very different scenario. The tightness of the race means there is no room for error for Democrats, which means there is no dissent. This Democratic Party is the most unified it has been than since it was under Obama. Even with Biden in 2020, and certainly not with Hillary in 2016, this party was far, far, far more, far more dismembered, not unified. People were in different factions, different groups, progressive caucus, people who were never Hillary, never Bernie, whatever it might be. So many different people in 2016 were really taken away. In 2020, the narrative from Democratic politicians that weren't enthusiastic with Biden was, quote, settle for Biden. Settling for someone is not enthusiasm. It's a vote, and votes count regardless if they're enthusiastic or not. At the same time, it's about turning out that base. And in 2020, it was the anti-Trump wave that helped Democrats win. In 2024, it will be a pro-Kamala wave that helps her win this election, should she win it. And so day one of the convention is already wraps. She spoke. She did a surprise announcement. She did a surprise speech. Joe Biden sort of passed the speech, uh, passed the torch through his speech, essentially was a recap of all of the things that he did and putting forth this Donald Trump is the existential threat to democracy that he is. His speech there was a transition to the next three days where Joe Biden will not be in attendance. Joe Biden will not be speaking. And it is entirely about Vice President Harris. And this seems to be an intentional play by the Democratic Party to make this election about the popular Democrat versus the unpopular Democrat. And in that case, that was Joe Biden, which is why in him being out of the race and Tim Walz, who has record high approval ratings in comparison to J.D. Vance, given that was the standard coming into this Tim Walz announcement, we have seen two Democrats completely revive a national persona in the case of Kamala Harris and completely construct a very positive national persona in the case of Tim Walz. And it is coming together in the time of a convention where there is a lot of positive press, a lot of press in general, a lot of just general coverage, not only from the press, but from people that are po popular on social media. You see now the Democratic Party is now pushing for influencers to be at the convention, something that, sure, anybody above the age of 40 might scoff and laugh at. But in reality, a lot of Gen Z and a lot of people that are young millennials, too, get their news from Twitter. They get their news from Instagram. They get their news from TikTok. And when they see their favorite creator saying, staying, getting in the fray about politics for the first time ever, that means something. It's the same effect of celebrity endorsements. It's not going to be the reason someone wins an election. But every part of this, if Kamala Harris is to win, is genuinely something that has contributed to her eventual electoral success. Because she is right. She came into this race as the underdog. Do I think she's an underdog today? Maybe not. But that doesn't mean the Democrats are in any position to get complacent. Because when I say she's not the underdog, I say a 55% chance of victory is how I'd mark Kamala Harris today. Not at all solid to sleep peacefully at night. And so that's why this momentum being built and built and built will only further expand after this convention. And we will likely see, I'm arguing, maybe a two, three point bump nationally. But that's enough to get Kamala Harris up four or five points on average. That's really good because that's where Biden was in 2020. And that's a winning coalition, as the numbers can tell us. And so I'd be interested to see what the numbers look like after this convention. But so far, 
The Democratic Party can feel it, and so can many people on the national level, that Kamala Harris's momentum is growing. It's getting better. It's going to go right into that first presidential debate, where I do think Kamala Harris is also going to receive a bump nationally. This is a fascinating election. And with 77 days to go, 78 days to go, I'm not entirely sure, losing track of time, 78, 77 days to go, it's truly anybody's race. But Kamala Harris is the favorite, and she can make that even more after this convention. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the top left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for 2024 presidential election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.